Welcome. It's the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. It's the 18th of June. Uh, remember, remember that we adhere to the Jenkins Code of Conduct in all of our interactions. Uh, be nice to each other. Mike, thanks for joining. That's great. Um, so usually what I do first is review the agenda of the meeting and see if there are any items we need to add and then we'll actually start going through the agenda. So we would talk to open action items, talk about Java 11 as default in our images. Then I had a minor update on security scanning and, oh, that's a, and then let's see coordinating proposed Docker changes. And I think that's it. Yeah. Anything, Mike, that you wanted to add to the agenda that's not already on it? Uh, nope. Okay. All right, great. So then first topics, I've got an action item to open the JEP for the Java 11 as standard Docker image. And that's see the later item and it'll be discussed. at uh, the Contributor Summit, June 25. Then we had a concept of that we need more maintainers and we need a better process in terms of how we update our Docker images because what we've got right now is the concept of maintainers at the repository level. And the reality is, for instance, I'm one of those maintainers, but I don't look at CentOS at all. And so what, what this proposed JEP is, is to acknowledge that we're going to use a code owner concept inside the repository so that other people are aware which images are maintained and which are not. And it'll have the same concept as adopt, of adopt an image as we have today for adopt a plugin. And so yes, I owe the team a, a Jenkins enhancement proposal on that one. Any question there, Mike? No, uh, nope. Makes okay, sense. then we've got plugin installation manager documentation that's in progress. Could use additional people who are experts in that tool to review it. I did an initial review and um, it's it certainly helped me. I adopted the plugin installation manager in my Docker image now, thanks to that documentation, but we need others who are more expert than me to help with the reviews. And we've got an open item on System 390 and on PowerPC. Jim Crowley of IBM, he hasn't joined us for, for several months, so I'll need to check with Jim to see if he's still interested. New topic then, Java 11. Okay, so Mike, I think here the, the, question, the, the question or the conversations were around first question was, shall we drop Java 8 immediately or maintain it for a time? And my proposal is keep Java 8 because it is so widely used. What's your, what's your sense there? Um, is it, are you seeing strong evidence in other places for, oh, we should just drop Java 8? Uh, other than the people that are currently advocating for doing that, um, I haven't seen a lot of people asking sort of the flip side of that, which is, um, why, you know, why Java 8 at all? Um, and when can we start using Java 11 language features? Um, so I, I think we pretty much have to, since it hasn't been formally announced, I think just based on my gut, we, you know, we should announce our intention to do that. Um, but we're going to have to give it, you know, six months, probably, I would guess. Um, lead time before it becomes an actual reality. Good. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, so if we declare, if we were cho to choose to drop Java 8 support, we would need some, some nice long period to alert the users that, hey, Java 8 support is going away. Uh, we intend to move to Java 11. Here's the plan. And I, it's nice that there's now in the next LTS, I guess there'll be a admin monitor. Um, I guess it's already in the weeklies. Yeah, that's correct. Um, so the. But a lot of people, like in my experience, um, and some of them more on the 
proprietary side, but a lot of people don't update their Jenkins as frequently as we might like. Right. Um, so they may not see that monitor. Uh, also, they wouldn't be affected by dropping Java support if they haven't updated, but uh, I guess it's a, an important thing to consider. Um, right. We, the if, biggest impact is going to be on people who do try to you know, stay relatively current. Yes, very good. Okay, excellent. So now you had suggested in your list that we communicate a plan to address the Java 11 issues. What I, I phrased it slightly differently that there are a number of Java 11 things that I'm not sure if they even are issues still. I've seen, so I've st I still have one case of an, at least one of an illegal access warning. It is just a warning it'll be a hard error in uh, Java 17. But are you aware of other other things um, that are maybe I, I not know, in public location? I know there's a, a query for current outstanding issues, but I have not had the chance to really give that any sort of review. I think mostly, um, like one, like we probably do need to go through you know, and collect as many of the open issues that we can find and then just do a determination of how impactful they are. Um, like the illegal access warning um, isn't a showstopper, but I also know um, there's a lot of push to go to Java 17, um, at least in a soft way um, in the next right. couple of months. Um, but really just having, you know, knowing what we potentially are facing and having a plan to address anything that looks like it's gonna really be a problem. Um, sort of seems to be the uh, prerequisite to really saying this is supported. Um, we don't need Java 8 anymore. Um, we're saying that, you know, we, well, we're gonna drop Java 8. We know there's two open issues that potentially could impact a lot of people. And so the plan is we'll resolve those issues, you know, in the next two months and then in month four, we drop you know, drop Java 8 support or whatever the, the timelines and the numbers may be, but really just to to try to move things forward. Like let's identify them, determine which ones are a requirement to be able to drop Java 8 and have a plan to to achieve that. Right, very good, okay. Okay, so, so this feels like a really good place. Dave and Aditya, thank you both of you for joining. Great, great to have you here. So we're right now talking to Java 11 as uh, default in our images and the thought then was that okay we we would like to target September as announcement point now there's there's uh, there's probably here I mean we should probably outline a communication plan and a delivery schedule right because one of the concerns that I, I appreciated especially from Daniel Beck was hey this should happen on the edge of the LTS release. So the next LTS.1 would be the first Jenkins, the first Java 11. Let me give, give a very specific example in the Jenkins slash Jenkins colon LTS image. And we would need blog posts, blog post announcing it upgrade guide entry in the next LTS.1 upgrade guide. Are there other things we need to do in terms of communication? Oh, social media. Yeah, I think communication in general is the key just to announce it far and wide and repeatedly. Um, so nobody is caught by surprise. Right. 
Okay, good. There's few people. People will always be caught by surprise, I guess, but as few people as possible. <laughs> that makes sense. Now, and certainly there's a, for me, there's a, a concern about the, the testing that we need to do to re, or the review of open issues and that we need reviewers, right? We need people who can spend the time and I assume we can ask for that help, enlist that help at the contributor summit and before because much of it is interactive checks to be sure that those issues Right now, there are, it looks like 19 of them. And 18 of the 19 are, are open and not in progress. So now it looks like many of those are plugin specific. Good, okay, so that gives us some hope. I think it's a good opportunity to get to contributor summit to socialize that list and hopefully find some excited people who feel the way we do um, and can help uh, with resolving all those or assessing them and, and resolving the ones that are critical at least. Right. Yeah, because for instance, some of these may be against relatively lower lower priority, for example, this RVM plugin, mm -hmm. um, we've got a solution for that. We're just gonna stop delivering that plugin. That's, there's no intention to ever fix that. Ruby, the Ruby runtime is going away. Nice. All right, so review the open issues, we got that, a communication plan, that should, and I guess that should be part of the, uh, the JEP as well, because certainly we need to be sure people understand what the plan is in terms of getting the word out. Okay, Mark, include it. All right, and then the actual code changes, um, And, and upgrade guide info collection on what changes as a result. Because one of the other changes that's hiding in this, and I guess I should make that very clear, um, we will switch from Debian, we hope anyway to switch from Debian, stretch or buster. So that's nine as the base image, 10 to Debian Bullseye with the idea that they, the Bullseye development team has stated their plan to release in 2021. And we assume that September is, is probably in time for them to have completed their release. Would that happen regardless of the Java 11 stuff? It, it would, it's just healthy to do it at the same time. Mm -hmm because then we're doing, we're doing multiple changes at once. The last time we updated, upgraded the base OS, uh, we used blog post, we communicated with blog posts. Uh, we included in an upgrade guide and I was impressed, it, it did not cause an awful lot of pain as far as I could tell. I don't remember receiving a single bug report or outraged complaint that we had broken someone when we upgraded from Stretch to Buster on the controller. And we just, we just need to be sure we do that again. Any other points, Mike, that you wanted to be sure we note there that um, ought to be included? I think our, I mean, I'm not super familiar with it, but I believe the CI, the OSS CI infrastructure is already doing a fairly comprehensive set of tests that should cover dropping Java 8 um, support. Um, like I don't think, not, I can't think of anything offhand that we need to add on the CI side as far as the build and testing process to 
um, ensure we're covering all of our bases. Um, good, actually, good point. There is, I think there's a, uh, I don't think we're doing any Windows based Docker testing, maybe missing at the moment. That's a, that's a good thing to check just to see. I, I don't remember for sure if we do, if we have any Windows based Docker images or image testing. We certainly got plenty of testing available for Java 8 and Java 11 to be sure they both run. Okay. This door, see so this door. <laughs> All right. Aditya, any any items that come to mind for you or Dave for you in terms of Java 11? Uh, no, Mark. I'm here to learn and observe. No problem. Thank you. Thanks very much for joining us. All right, then, Mike, I think that covers, unless you've got something else on the Java 11 topic, I'd say we um, call it covered. Yeah, I think that's good. I can't think of anything else offhand. All right. So plan to meet, plan to meet at the Contributor Summit in the, in the Java 11 track. And plan to continue conversations. Oops. Continue conversations in the mailing list. Forgive the cough. Thank you. All right, next topic was on security scanning. Just FYI, we've got an ongoing project with the Linux Foundation security team and the SNCC uh, development team seeking ways to better use LF the LFX security scanning facilities and teach them more about Jenkins plugin packaging. Right now we've got the results of their scans but the results of their scans are filled with unnecessary false positives because the Maven or the Jenkins HPI format does something with dependencies that Snyk isn't, isn't aware of and therefore leads to, to flawed, flawed reports. So Oleg is working with LFX security and Snyk to try to get a better result for us we are delighted that they scan the thousand or two thousand repositories, but we can't effectively use that until we get better support for Jenkins and the Jenkins HPI format. Any questions there on security scanning? Okay. The other is CodeQL is is being used. It's a, a domain specific language available on GitHub. And Daniel Beck wrote a number of checks that are specific to Jen common Jenkins issues. And it's been used now to scan for hosting requests and it's being used by a select group of plugins. And we're looking forward to further deployment in the future. Now we've got some changes proposed for Docker packaging and Docker, Docker building. And right now they're largely stalled. So I'm not gonna take much any time here to talk. Just be aware that there are proposed changes to the controller, including replace install plugins.sh as contents with the plugin installation manager. Alex Earl has created this pull request the plugin installation manager is a Java tool that is much better suited to managing uh, plugin dependencies and plugin version numbers. Uh, his, his script change is here and pretty simple in terms of what it does. It replaces the script with a call to a Java program. What we don't have is detailed compatibility checks to, to confirm all the many ways that install plugins.sh is used. And we don't have yet have um, the merged pull request for this plugin installation manager documentation. 
any questions there? Okay, then that's all I had for today's session. Any other topics that needed to be brought to today's session? I don't have anything. Java Loader right. is my, my big concern at the moment, so. Let's let's take our time then today and Monday, Monday and Tuesday of next week and continue to Java 11 discussions offline. And we'll meet everybody on Friday next in the Contributor Summit for more discussion of Java 11. Thanks, everybody. Recording will be available probably in one to two hours so that others can see what was discussed here today. Thanks very much. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark.